Ladies and gentlemen, I like I, I should have had a career, I think, uh, at a, in a three ring circus. You know, yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen, and in this ring we have the elephant and the elephant, the literally, literally the elephant in the room. But circuses are going, are going bye bye. So, probably like so many good. things, you guys are listening to Full Auto. I am Paul, Paul Gordon, and I am the one and the only professor. And this is Professor, uh, Professor Rambo. Rambo. You can just call him Prof. PR. We'll call him PR. What do you think, dude? We're gonna call you PR. I like PR prof better. It's more I like prof. profit. <laughs> I, I Humble man. Humble man here. More you know, I prefer it if you call me profit. So, how have you been this week? What has what has happened to you? It, it, uh, with, without without burdening our television audience with your your miserable pitiful life. Yeah, that's about right. Miserable pitiful. <laughs> that's about right. That's about right. We can right. move on now. Well, I'm having a good week. I'm doing some uh, uh, one of our new sites, uh, which has kind of been kind of dying. I've decided to really work on it, get it reinvigorated. And it's a small number, but it's about to hit 100,000 views. Or not views, excuse me, way more Dude, than 100,000 views. 100,000 like visitors for the month. That you sound like a... Uh... Like ev an evangelical preachers, like I heard we that. have reached the hundred thousand. Actually, I'm actually I, I could have been. I could have been. Was, like, if and you I, could let send me a tell dollar you, for every you can view. just send me a dollar. I'll make sure that liberty, the message of liberty, gets in every home, in every living room across this land. But I'm not an evangelist, dude. So. And Jesus will love you a little more. <laughs> I'll, you know, send in those napkins and I'll cry over them. I'll cry liberty tears over them. And then I'll send them back to you. You wipe your faces with the liberty tears soaked napkins and you'll be more free. That's just a dollar. Send in a dollar. Plus a self-addressed stamped envelope. <laughs> and $5 for shipping and handling. And $5 for shipping and handling. And there's a $3 handling fee as well. In addition to the shipping and handling fee, there's also a handling fee, which is not shipping and handling. It's no. extra handling. No, it's handling handling. It's handling handling. That's <laughs> what yes. it is. So we are going to start off right away. Just go right to our first story. You actually, you, you found this. Tell tell the studio audience how you stumbled upon this discovery. As we're the, going to talk about a wifey gun. The tubes of the Ube. The tubes of the Ube. When I'm looking for stuff. On YouTube, you know, it, it has, you know, its history and it starts autofilling stuff. And I came across, what is it called? The 22 TCM? 22 TCM, TCM sir. Yeah. And it's a very interesting little cartridge. Um, has a lot of pluses and a couple of minuses. Um, and I've been sharing it with friends and family. And some people are like, wow, that's an interesting little cartridge gun combination and as a handgun the muzzle velocity the energy at the muzzle it's pretty impressive for a little 22 it's essentially a necked up nine mil with a 22 bullet sitting on top of it well the tw it's a neck down no it's necked mil. up it's actually longer and actually you'll see oh, as a well, matter of fact yeah, Let's... well, that's because it's not a 9 mil. It's actually the 5.56 cartridge that's been cut down. Well, I tell you what. Why don't we go ahead? I, I say go ahead way too much on shows, by the way. I'm trying to curb that. But you know what? Screw it. Why don't we go ahead and we're going to watch um, a part of a video made um, by GunBlast.com. Um, um, I'm just saying up to annoy you. Um, yeah, that's his thing. His thing is um. My thing is um, go ahead. We'll go ahead. We're going to go ahead and play uh, this video. So, going to need you to be quiet, sir, while we play this video. And we're going to start the video now. The Rock Island can I, can I say something? Oh, my gosh. It started. Wild the video was live. Now, they're one of the top producers <laughs> in the world as far as the number of uh, 1911 uh, pistols that they make. Uh, one that's really interested me here lately, and I've shot several of their pistols over the years, is this uh, 22 TCM. And this is a this is our high cap, wide body, uh, 1911. This holds uh, 17 shocks in the mag plus one gives you 18 shocks of this 22 TCM. 
Now this is a cartridge that they've came out with that uh, it shoots a 40 grain bullet at about 2,050 feet per second, 12 foot from the muzzle where I'm shooting right here. So it's really coming out of there good. I had a couple of them run over 2,100 feet per second, but it's uh, uh, the, the cartridge is accurate, the gun's accurate. I have no uh, insert from a ransom rest on it, but I was shooting about two and a half inch groups uh, with a uh, magazine full at 25 yards shooting off a rest. Just using my old eyeballs. Works really well. We shot into some uh, uh, ballistic gel here today, too, which is really interesting. I want to test the penetration of this because a lot of people, they put a, a lot more emphasis on penetration than they really should, I think. But it is important. you got to have enough penetration to get to the vitals. And I compared this to some good atomic bonded core plus P uh, 9 millimeter. And uh, that atomic stuff went about 15 inches, and this went 14 inches. And it's a lot less recoil. And the bullet, I dug it out of there. It expanded to about 9 millimeter diameter. Didn't lose any weight. It's 40 grain hollow point bullet, but it's a little jackety bullet. It holds together really tough. This is not a regular 22 long rifle bullet coming out of this little case. Now, I've uh, read a lot of things. A lot of people say it's a neck down 9 millimeter. It's not a neck down 9 millimeter. It's not a neck down 9 millimeter, he said. The case is not a 9 millimeter case. Why are you talking over the man? So, and, and this, Why are you uh, doing that? a 9 millimeter will not chamber in the 22 TCM barrel. I think they did it probably for safety reasons because you don't want to light off a 9 millimeter and have it squeezed down to 22 caliber going through the bore. Uh, while we're talking about the 9 millimeter, this uh, pistol also comes with an accessory 9 millimeter barrel to give you some uh, cheaper practice. You can buy the 9 millimeter ammo a lot cheaper. This, uh, uh, the 22 TCM on our website now is about $24.95 for a box of 50. So it's about a half dollar a shot. You can shoot the uh, 9 millimeter a lot cheaper comes with a 9mm barrel and the accessory 9mm spring because you need the heavier spring for the 9mm. Another advantage that I really like of this is uh, it uses a 7 pound uh, recoil spring in here which is very, let me get this. Alright, so you Check get it. the idea there. Very easy 7 pound recoil spring, spring. it costs about can, 50 cents a round though. So it's, uh, it's a pretty expensive round, but as you could see in the video, now, Dimitri could not, I mean, uh, Professor Rambo could not see the video. So, uh, but but he actually saw the video before. He's the one who sent it to me. And I was like, oh, man, we got we to gotta talk about this. But it, it comes with a barrel, a 9 millimeter barrel, as it said in the video, so you could practice with the 9 mil, which is much cheaper I've gotten nine mil. Uh, what, what, what's the cheapest price that you've been able to find nine mil at per round? I don't typically buy nine mil, so. Oh, that's right. And I hoarded, You're right. And I hoarded ammo years ago, so I don't know what. I haven't been to a, a gun shop to buy ammo. I think I got like I, I I mean I I I might I might be totally, uh, but I I think I can get it like twenty twenty cents, fifteen cents maybe if you buy it in buyers. Or yeah, but you're going to pay a lot more for, like, high-performance yeah, ammunition. Yeah, I'm talking about, I'm talking about range, you know, yeah, just full metal ammo. jacket. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just just, just, your, just your, 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 your simple ball ammo to go uh, plinking in the range. Uh, so you could put the barrel on. And what's also happening on the reverse side, why don't you tell us what's happening on the reverse side with Glock? Oh, the same company made a... Um an upper for the Glocks that will handle this. And they're making a slightly shorter version. I think they're calling it the R. The R. Uh, which is a little shorter, so it'll actually fit into a Glock 9mm magazine. Uh, the, the actual slug, the bullet, the projectile, is uh, it's a little shorter, or it's at least seated into the cartridge more deeply. Uh, I suspect that's probably the route this cartridge is going to develop into because by allowing it to fit into 9mm magazines, you just open the op an opportunity to... But don't you have an issue with your chamber if it's a 9mm chamber and you got a little 22 going through there, little bouncy bounces? Only, no. Uh, the only time you're going to have an issue is if you have a retard moment where you're trying to uh, put 9mm in a 22 caliber a barrel. Okay, but you, you've got that little twenty two going through a barrel designed for a nine millimeter. You don't think that that would be an issue? No, because you're going to change the barrel. 
Okay, you're talking about changing the barrel. Oh, I get. It. Okay, I'm. I didn't follow you. So what you're talking about is making it so you can use the same magazine as a nine millimeter. So Correct. you can use so a nine millimeter nine... magazine for both instead of having right. to have so two have separate magazines. Nine, if you have a Glock nine millimeter, you're going to use the same magazine, but you're going to change the barrel and the spring. But this R with the cartridge being shorter is it is well, it losing it... velocity? I haven't looked into that. Oh, okay. I don't know if they're seeding it more deeply or if they're actually... Either uh, way, I, if they were seeding it more deeply, wouldn't that... That changes the pressures. You know, uh, I was looking at something recently where uh, an under-pressured cartridge was, is more dangerous than, a, than an over-pressured cartridge because, you know, an under-pressured cartridge, <clears throat> uh, the way the gas is burned, they burn more quickly, so you have a, a, a spike in pressure inside the cartridge as opposed to those, the powders actually blowing into the barrel and burning into the barrel. So uh, obviously there's a lot of uh, engineering and physics and chemistry involved in determining you know, what the proper pressure is going to be for a cartridge that's seated, sorry, where... A projectile is seated more deeply into the cartridge, but I'm assuming they figured that out. And if you're going to lose performance on it, uh, I wouldn't you know. want to lose much more performance. It's, I mean, yeah. as, as it is, it's kind of, I mean, where does this uh, compare the 22 TCM? Where does it compare based um, on your research? Look, it's, uh, it's an interesting little cartridge. It's, uh, if I read things correctly, you're getting, uh, 300 to 400 pound foot you're, that's that's tremendous for a self defense round and um, uh, and it, yeah the, 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 and velocities the, are 2000 feet per second um, that's pretty substantial uh, you put this thing in a rifle and now you're up at the 5 or 600 pound foot and velocities are more like 27 to 2800 or yeah 2800 feet per second you know, this, uh, that's a great little varmint cartridge. Let's, uh, let's, uh, you won't be and they able to are, see it. And they are chambering it in a little rifle. Um, but, I mean, it, it, look, it falls, it falls right between the 22 Magnum and the 22 Hornet. If, uh, I mean, if you're going to compare it to the Hornet, it doesn't even come close. The 22 Hornet was designed in 1922 and is a horribly underappreciated cartridge it, it is one of my horribly 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 uh it's i mean you're looking at seven and eight hundred pound foot uh energy with a 22 hornet that's tremendous and that's those little suckers are flying at three thousand feet per second that's, yeah that's a zip that's a serious that's a, performing that's, that's cartridge five five six speed there well, yeah, um, it's it's a horribly underappreciated cartridge. This is a tremendous varmint cartridge. Hell, you could take hogs with this thing. Now, now what I like about the twenty two TCM, which is the title of this show, is I think that uh, what what they showed in the video there, by the way, that's a, a, a nineteen eleven, uh, which I don't know how how I mean nineteen eleven is not a terribly easy conceal carry gun you can conceal but uh it's kind of big and this is it looks like a full-size 1911 if, if you're watching they're making the video. a smaller one seven now. but still 17 rounds <laughs> this is this is a gun that has very little recoil and it has it's it's not like you're firing a 380 you know this is this is definitely more powerful than a 380 so this to me is a good wifey gun and uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't excellent wifey gun. It's actually even even like uh, a a gun by your bed, preferably in a handgun safe, folks. Uh, but a gun by your bed for for your wife, you know, she's got that gun, and you're going for the rifle. She's grabbing that gun as a backup. I th I think that's an excellent little uh, backup. look. Whether it's a wifey gun or it's a gun that is it it is without question an excellent platform for someone who has issues with recoil if if there if you have someone a member of your family who who cannot manage recoil this is an outstanding cartridge probably is a it great a well, it, it, 
We go ahead. No. Is it a 10 millimeter? No. Is no, it it's not a battle right. It's not a battle yeah. round. That's for sure. It's not. But I, I don't even think a nine mil is a battle round for that matter. No. But 17 rounds going down the hallway at some bad guy who means to do your wife harm is good going to make. That you're going to stop him. Pretty. Good he's chance. going to have a very, very bad day. Yeah, and you know, unlike those little 22 Magnum whatevers, you know, uh, this this is going to be accurate from range. You're not going to yeah. have an issue with that. So, and so pair this up with a little bolt action rifle and you, you've got a great little survival kit here i mean if you're a shit hit the fan kind of dude this which, is a great which, card which you and i kind of are we're not like yeah. nuts about it but we kind of are yeah. uh, the the day somebody makes a semi-auto rifle in this is going to be a good day for the gun world because this thing has some serious energy some serious uh killing power and the thing about the round is right now it's expensive but if if more people start to make guns the cost is going to go down for that round yeah if if i had to choose between like a 22 hornet and this the 22 hornet's gonna win okay but the 22 hornet's such a long cartridge it's a real little you know very bullet. very limited yeah, yeah you, you're not gonna put this thing you're not gonna put but you know, in a hornets in revolvers, or I'm sure someone has, but it, or in a semi-auto handgun for self-defense. Now, before I, I want us to, on the other side here, we're going to I'm, I'm going to actually play a little bit of uh, some shooting so you can watch this uh, 22 Hold TCM on. get fired. But but if you compare it to like the 5.7, the 5.7 doesn't perform as well. Actually, that's what I want to do on the other side. I want to compare it to the 5.7. Oh, and I also want to compare it to the Tokarov. Alrighty. So I'm going to play this video, and you're just going to have to trust me when I say it's over. And this is, he's, he's firing the gun, uh, and he's getting a, a, a pretty decent group there. I don't know how far away he is, about maybe, I don't know, 15 yards. I, I'm terrible at touching distances, but uh, it, it, it does have, if you'll see it there as we're watching this video, you will see that it has, it does have some serious flash. <laughs> we'll talk to you a little bit about penetration on this thing. Uh, and now he's some, talking about uh, the penetration uh, 316 here. 316th thick mild steel here, this uh, uh, square pipe. 316th mild steel. This, this is a 9mm plus P right there. And it just splattered on it, dented it a little bit. The 22 TCM pokes holes right in it, and the hole is bigger than the 22 caliber bullet because it expands as it's going in. Makes a nice hole in here. So hard targets, you shooting through a car body or anything like that, windshield stuff like that. If you've got to get to your target through any kind of a barrier that is behind, it's a penetrator. The 22 TCM does a lot better than nine millimeter does, as I can show you here. And nine millimeter does better than 45 does on penetrating. So th uh, th of course, uh. A car door is a lot thinner than this. This is some nice stuff. Uh, Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. What's his? I forget his last name. I'm terrible. What's his last name? I just want to call him Uncle Jeff. Dude, you know what? He's got like I I want somewhere like in my life. Uncle that everybody wants. Jeff Quinn. Jeff Quinn. You know yeah. what I want? You know what I want from him? I want his beard, man. I want them Brady beardy beards, man. I want the Brady beardy beard, man. If I got a Brady to, beardy beard, I'm boss, do, man. To have that, you you. You can never grow a beard like that. You have to eat a bear heart live no, while the no, bear's no. still alive to be able to do that. No, there's something about, to, in order to grow a beard that way, there's there's some male mechanism that allows you to do it when you ride a Harley Davidson. Oh, you have it's to ride the Harley? That's, uh, yeah, that's, pretty that's much. a prerequisite? If Must you don't ride a ride Harley, the Harley, you can never grow a beard like that. It's like so. This is science you're talking. So absolutely. So let's get to five seven. Okay, let's just go to five seven. First off, for me, the five seven, I've I dismissed it a while ago. I think that it's uh, maybe a glorified three eighty is kind of what I'm calling it. Not even close. Not even close. Not it's not it's, even a glorified three eighty. You're yeah. saying? Yeah, I know people who are like. Oh, it looks God, really. It looks so cool, but it's not all that impressive. 
Uh, it's not. I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, what's that? Oh, that looks cool. Dude, that looks like a little 5.56 five, five, or something. Oh, that's so good. Cool. Yeah, but it's weak, man. It's weak as water. Weak as water. Yeah. So it, it, I would totally choose this round, the, the 22 TCM over the 5.7. But then let's talk 7.62 by 2.5 because I still have in my mind somewhere in Fantasyland of owning a Tokarov someday. Well, that fantasy should not be diminished by this cartridge. I don't think so. I, I, I would, I probably would choose because that, that over Because that Tokarov is like a, you know, 38 special plus P to 357 Magnum, cl damn close to it. Yeah, depending on what, you know, what yeah. type you get. Yeah. So, um, there, there's no comparison between the two. Um, and this is a 30 caliber you're talking about with the 762 versus a 22. You're talking a 556 versus a you know 762. There's there's just they're in different, very different leagues. God bless but, you. Thank you. But God bless you for turning away. Thank you. But. <coughs> And there he goes again. I don't think Professor Rambo wants to speak. It's like his body's like, no, don't tell them. But if I... Geez, oh, my, you're gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's out for the count, baby. He's out for the count. Holy moly, Larry just left me voice messages. Wow. Okay, Larry, I see that you left me voice messages, which I can't listen to while I'm on the show. But I can't believe that Larry, Larry never leaves me. What Larry is my resident State of Unstate Face friend who ticks off all of my uh, Liberty friends. <laughs> but that's okay. So anyway, are you mm -hmm. back after that cough, 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 cough um, You're not back. Okay. So I think when, when you're examining a wifey gun or a friendy gun or a uh, love a, a newbie gun, maybe a newbie a gun. A newbie gun. Um, if your daughter's going off to college and she's a gun enthusiast and she knows her stuff and you want to set her up with something to be able to take care of her personal defense needs uh, and she weighs 115 pounds, this is an outstanding platform for her. Yeah, and realistically, uh, it's, it's, it'll do the job. In in yeah. most it'll situations. do the job a lot better than a three eighty yes. or uh twenty two magnum. I wouldn't even consider twenty two magnum for home carrying. No. Right. No, no, but thank it, you. It's it's it is a viable cartridge for people with issues with recoil. Um but it is not a go to battle cartridge. It is not I have to repeat, it is not a ten mil. It's not a 357 SIG. It's not a Tokarov or 40 cal. And it sure as hell it isn't even a 9 mil. But what it is, is a great alternative for those cartridges if you have issues with recoil. And if you want 17, you know, bullets going down range, it's not a bad option that way either. Yeah, that's a, well. That's the thing I like about, and I like that 1911 platform. And I mean, just the look of the 1911. I I love. It's just a sexy looking gun. I'm not. I just a beautiful looking gun. It's just uh, to have 17 rounds go by, and this is, and because the recoil is so little, it's you're you're. I mean, you don't have to have a lot of skill and training to be able to fire, 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 fire with this gun, because there's very little lift. Uh, uh, of the barrel. So, I think we're done here. Are you ready to go on to the second story of our Most adventure? Certainly. And our second story of our adventure is it's 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 not really about the story itself so much. It's more about how the story is told, both by the media and even by the police. And I'm talking here about the the PA man that was arrested at D.C. Trump Hotel, uh, he was armed, and uh, apparently what happened, this guy's name is Brian Moles here, and apparently 
Well, this guy decided he was going to D.C. Nobody quite understands why, but somebody called the Pennsylvania State Police, he's from Pennsylvania, and said, this guy is armed and he's going to D.C., and I guess there's some implication that he may have been a threat. But who is he a threat? Who is he a threat to? If you look at his Facebook page, he seems to be a pro-Trump guy, but like something seems off with the guy. So maybe he's like really loves pro Trump, like 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 in a way like I love you so much I want to kill you. I don't know. It's 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 really creepy. But the way that the story is told, first of all, the the police chief when he comes out, he is talking about the guns in the man's car. And he's saying, well, he had these guns in D.C. and we have to make sure that we get these guns out of D.C. Like guns are just going to suddenly explode and just suddenly stand up and shoot people at random. So there's this, this I mean, you don't know, at this point, you don't know anything about the guy. You don't know why he's there. It, this guy, maybe he was there because he's a fan of Trump. And the guns were in his car just because the guns were in his car. Uh, the media, the way they reported, they reported that he had a assault-style rifle. That's right, an assault-style rifle. Now, what he had was simply a Bushmaster AR-15. That's what he had, Bushmaster AR-15, and he had a Glock 23. So if you read the police report, the police report writes it as he has a Glock 23, he has an AR, he has a Bushmaster assault style rifle, and now here's the here's the trippy thing. This this, this shows you police are they're just they're not incredibly familiar with guns. I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't police out there that really know their guns, but you can't just because you're a cop. I used to assume if you're a cop, you really know guns. But if you if you look at the report, what the report says is it is that they had uh, seven point seven six two ammo, thirty rounds of point seven six two ammo. Now that's it. That's all it says. Point <laughs> seven six two ammo. And then the other thing it says is that it had he had sixty rounds. Now. I'm wondering if you're carrying a Glock 23 and a Bushmaster AR, why are you carrying 762 ammo on you? I, I can't figure that out. Uh, and then the other part is it says it's carry uh, uh, 60 rounds of 2.23, and then in parentheses, uh, 0. 0.556. <laughs> That's how the police report is written. How many things did they get wrong, Dimitri? <laughs> Ooh, most of it. But, I know, pretty amazing. Look, I, I know and love a fair amount of cops. Yeah, I'm not, not, I'm, I'm not busting not on love, cops yeah, one not way or love another. Not love in a weird way, but love as like brothers in arms. Yeah, and, I, uh, I may be slightly different than you on that, but yeah. that's that's not the point of this so, story. Yeah, so um, uh, I know that some of them are gun guys, uh, but most of them are not. Most of them do not join the force because they like guns so much they want to be able to walk around with one on their hip. Most of the guys join the police force, don't know a damn thing about guns, and they start learning about guns being in the police force. Some of these guys are ex-mill and do know stuff about guns. And the guys who are ex-mill actually usually typically know a, a shit ton of stuff about guns. Um... But your average Joe, who was your high school jock who joined the police force because he wanted to make a difference in his community, chances are he doesn't know squat. And I suspect the person who wrote that report didn't know squat because they got all their decimal points in the wrong place. And um, none of his guns carry a... 762! What yeah. did he mean? What do um, you mean? But it, but he doesn't. But he doesn't say seven point six two. No, no, it's he says point seven six two. He does. He says point seven six two. Yeah, but yes. point seven six two is incorrect. Well, well, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm saying he said he didn't. But if it, but if they had it correct and it was seven point six two. Well, then well, still. What was, yeah, what was that doing there? Where is the X that follows? Yeah. Well, also okay, for, but, what but, but also too. for what For what platform was he know. carrying that ammo? 
Now the question I have is: Is he Pretty a sure Trump fan? Is he a Trump fan who went to D.C. because he feels that he needs to protect his president? There's there's very little information so far. Yeah, uh, he has pro-Trump stuff. Uh, the the the, the D.C. chief said. Uh, let me go back to the story here. Let me go back to this. Just a, it's a silly story all around. This guy got caught in Washington D.C. with firearms. Y- you might as well have gone to communist China and threatened their premier uh, with de- beheading, and you know, and w- be walking to his premises with a knife. Um, Pretty much, you're not going to fare so well. He said that uh, the D.C. chief uh, said during his little press conference that the arrest averted a potential disaster. When asked to clarify, of course, he offered no clarification. I'm, I'm just suspicious. And, and that's the reason I picked the story wasn't – it was really to highlight how the media covers guns – they don't know anything about it. I mean, it's not like you guys don't know this, but mm. we're going to bring it up. We're going to keep showing it so it's just drilled home. And anybody who happens to watch the show that's not necessarily a gun lover that happens to wonder in for whatever, what, one reason or another, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that point across. But not only do they not know guns, do the media not go know guns, but there's a fair number of police who also do not know guns, and that's not a good thing. You don't want a mm. cop. You don't want to have to deal with a cop. If you have a gun, it's it's really not awesome if the cop that you're dealing with is not understanding of gun culture. Because most well, likely they're going to be a little more nervous. A little edgy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Got guys who are ex-mill who know their guns and who you're going to deal with are, are probably going to be more a little more high speed. Um yeah, I, I had an incident that happened some time ago where I had to relay to officers details about guns that uh, if I happened to be dealing with officers who were gun people, so it was fine. Everything went fine. But I can definitely see that if I was not dealing with officers that were not gun people, I'm not saying it would have went like horribly bad, but it would have been... Definitely, I would at the very least, I would have been more careful. In... Well, and and that begs a question too, because here here's a, a broader question: If you're getting pulled over by a cop, let's say in West Virginia, uh, versus being pulled over by a cop, let's say in Baltimore, the cop who grew up in Baltimore probably has zero experience with firearms outside of the academy versus the guy in West Virginia who probably grew up hunting squirrels and target shooting and plinking and being part of a gun culture. So when you approach or when you have an incident with the guy from Baltimore, the officer from Baltimore, his perspective of you and guns is going to be very different than the guy from West Virginia. Right, absolutely. Uh, how uh, many boys how many boys and girls in Manhattan get to go target shooting on the weekends and become part of that gun culture? I would say very few. Uh, less than 2%. Yeah. So and how not many not of a those, high percentage. Yeah, and how many of those are going to join the police force and be in the academy <clears throat> to share their love of firearms? Uh, pretty much none of them. So the people you get who are in the police force are definitely not part of the gun culture, especially in urban areas. So you have to be careful on um, how you interact with those police officers a little bit more than those who are comfortable around firearms. So if you have a concealed carry permit, um, in most circumstances, if it's a state that uh, is cool with it, you present your carry permit if you get pulled over for a traffic ticket. Why? Because most cops like to see the fact that you're not a wanted felon. This is your philosophy, not mine. It is. Most, is, I have a very most of the cops approach. that I know 
most of the cops that I know will approach a car and when the guy presents a concealed carry permit with his driver's license, they're like, oh, this guy doesn't have any felonies. He's he's one of us. He's not a predator. Yeah, my my uh, my take is a little different. You give people as little information as possible. Yeah, but in some states, it's the law to present that when an officer well, pulls you. Yeah, if you're dealing with the law, that's and that's and that's um, that you'll yeah. have to decide. If, yeah, I won't get into Correct. that. Correct. But, but the, in, in, where I'm from, it's not the law, so it's a choice. So in Washington D.C., when I first heard of heard the story, I assumed that the firearms were in the hotel room. No, they're in the car, and oh, that's dear. it. They were in the car. They're not even in the hotel room. I also thought that he had the pistol on him. He didn't. The pistol was in the glove box. But the now. This guy, oh, I should add this element to it because there's another element to this story, which is, you know, if you're going to carry, if you're going to have guns, especially if you're going to have guns where you shouldn't have them. I'm not saying you should ever do that. I'm not advocating for anything. Don't, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't say that Paul said it was okay. Uh, this guy, he actually had, a, apparently the AR was just sitting in his car out in the open. And that's, and that, that probably got some reactions as well. In Washington, D.C., <laughs> Look at that. Oh my well, gosh, it's going to rape me, that gun. Look well, at it. it, it it's, it's scary. Well, if he was traveling through and he was on the interstate and he pulled over to get lunch um, and the guns were unloaded and the ammo and the guns were separated, uh, there's not much of a case here. No, no, he was in the hotel room. The car was outside, parked. And he had his... A, a, yeah, yeah, there is a case in, in D.C. with the D.C. anti-gun laws. Yeah, he's 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 going away for probably at least five years. Well, yeah, just because of the gun charges. He's and it's uh you know not he doesn't have a concealed carry license and he had a gun a handgun concealed. Yeah, so but if he's transporting, even though it wasn't on, on him, interstate, huh? Even though the, the gun wasn't on him. Again, if he's transporting, you're allowed to travel through states transporting your firearms. Um, well, he, 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 stopped, he stopped and he st he checked into the hotel. Yeah, I don't know how that factors in, to be quite honest. Me neither. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't well, advocate the guy, any of these laws yes. anyway. So. Right. I mean, no matter how you cut it, he's screwed. Hey, screw. Irrespective of the law. Yeah. Because it's an anti-gun culture and they're going to find whatever they can find. Yeah, and you can see the anti-gun reflected, I would say, I mean, it's telling that it's the D.C. police that write this report and clearly they don't know. They don't know their 762 from their 556. For the love of God. For the love of God. They don't know their 762 from their 556. Well, gonna, they got their decimal points all over they, the place. They, they, I mean, 762 what? 762 what? Do they think there's like just one 762? Well, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. So. Are we done? We're done with this story. We're going to go to the next story. Are you going to kick this puppy in the head? I'm going to punch this puppy in the head. Oh, That's what I do. I punch this. It's just a figure of speech, folks. Don't protect your puppy, puppies. I am a dog lover. I would never actually punch a dog. Only puppies. No, I would I would not. I would not punch a puppy while people were watching. No, I, I get. So this, uh, this next story here is, is I think rather interesting, and that's why I picked it. Illuminate us. Newspaper claims stand your ground laws offer people too much freedom. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The stand your ground. <laughs> Are you already going apoplectic here? Is it it's already like... I have, to, I have to pop my neck. Ah, uh, I got crap it's tism getting, right now. I got it's crap getting tism. very tight. Oh, really? Why Why is it getting tight? Is it, is, it, is it me? Is it you? Is it the story? Too much freedom. Too much freedom. Newspaper uh, claims stand your ground law offers people too much freedom. So let's... Let's scroll down here. And then you see a nice picture of the lady. I know, Dimitri, you can't much, see this. Too much freedom? Is that like too much freedom of speech? Too much freedom of 
assembly if too much. You, if you get too too much, you got you get to make too many personal decisions about your own well being, dude. Mm. How are you not understanding this? You you have too many free decisions about your own well being and your own basic self defense. And there you see the girl. Uh, this girl, and she's standing mm -hmm. proudly, and well, she's looking very solemn and smug, and she's holding the stand your ground equals kill at will. Stand your ground equals kill at will. These people don't know gun culture. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you mean by these people? I mean anti-gun people. I only mean oh. anti-gun people. Anti-gun <laughs> people truly are these people. They, they qualify yeah. to be. I, I'll give you a, a little anecdote that happened recently with me. With me. Concealed carrier. Ready? Concealed carrier mentality. And I've I've talked to multiple concealed carriers and they can they can share similar stories. I'm pulling out and I happen to I, I didn't see a vehicle. Uh, pulling was, out with your car. Pulling out with my car. Let's, okay, let's that didn't clarify. sound right. That could have that could have put it this show wow. in a whole other, whole wow. other direction there. But uh, be careful saved it. how you say things. Words, words do, do imply things that yes. sometimes you don't want them to apply. But I'm pulling out in a tricky spot with my car where it's hard to see it. So sometimes when I pull out, I the car is closer than I would have pulled out if I had seen them. I'm, I've never. It's, it's never been a, like a life-threatening situation, but still, it's not a good spot to pull out. And so this car, I was a little close, and this car honks his horn. Okay, whatever. And I even was like, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. But uh, the, the, when I pull up to the stoplight, the guy pulls beside me. He winds down his window, and he starts yelling expletives at me. And he's very aggressive in his language. He's He's road raging on me. And I know that I have a gun. And I'm thinking to myself, I do not want to escalate this situation at all. Now, I'm, I'm a bit of a hot-blooded person. So maybe under a different circumstance, I may have, I could easily have yelled back. I could have, I, I'm not saying I would have gotten out of the car and attacked him, but definitely... Rolling down my window and firing expletives back, and yeah, I could, yeah. I mean, it, I wanted to, and I thought, I have a gun. If this thing escalates, somebody's going to get shot. And so because I know I have a gun, and I want to stand my ground, I avoid putting myself in a situation where I might have to use my gun because I'm thinking in my mind, no matter how much I want to give this guy, because I, I apologized to him, but that wasn't enough. This guy, this guy was a jerk. He was a total jerk. I would love to have given it back to him. That wasn't me, was it? No. I was, I, was in, I was in a similar situation. I, I, I did not want to kill him. I didn't want to have to be put in this situation where I'm going to kill a guy because he's yelling expletives at me. So stand your ground means I'm going to be more responsible and less likely to aggress against you because I not only do I value your life, but I value my life. And I don't want to have to wake up the next day realizing that I killed somebody. Don't want it. I don't or know sitting about in you. a cold cell room with Bubba. Or sitting in right, right. That's uh, that's a uh, that's another possibility. That's a, so there's all kinds of reasons why you know you're actually safer. You're safer when people carry guns around you. I'm not talking well, about like when the, rimrods are carrying guns because that's going to happen. But rimrods, yeah. if they don't have guns, they have knives. If they don't have knives, they have fists. They have well, they do stuff. Of knives. You you have that guy on the train. Right, that guy on the train just recently. A guy with a knife is as dangerous as a guy with a gun. He killed two people and wounded another. Right. One guy against three. One wow. guy against three. That's right. And yeah. all he had was a knife. If somebody had been concealed carrying, that could have been over uh, a lot a lot sooner. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm reading here from uh, uh, Breitbart. Uh, the Tribune points out that stand your ground legislation being considered in Minnesota, quote, would expand current rights to use deadly force in self-defense or in defense of one's home. And even though the law would apply to law-abiding law -abiding citizens, whatever that means, exercising their Second Amendment right to self-defense, the Tribune argued, 
that the use of lethal, lethal force might be too, quote, subjective under a stand-your-ground framework. For instance, and here's, here's the great quote. Are you ready for the great quote? Some gun owners may feel nervous because of the way another person is dressed. <laughs> what? Others might find members of a different race, culture, or religion threatening. So what they're saying is, well, you know, the stand your ground. If you change it to stand your ground, then if somebody shoots somebody because of the way they're dressed or because of a different race or culture or religion, somebody's going to say, "Well, that's perfectly." No, no they're not. No, nobody in their right mind is going to say that you're justified. That you, uh, the the only time that anybody is going to say, uh, "Stand your ground" is okay, is it is if is if somebody was was actually threatening you, like d directly, not an implied threat because. Oh, he's a, you know, he's a big, scary, you know, maybe Dimitri is too Greek. You're too Greek, dude. And you got that scary beard. You kind of look, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, ah, ah, stand your ground. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I'm getting convicted. <laughs> I'm getting convicted. It's moronic. Yeah. It's absolutely. Yeah, the, it, go ahead. The fact that you're actually trying to discredit a moronic statement seems like a waste of time. I mean, it's just anybody who hears that statement and agrees with it probably isn't listening to our show. Yeah, but <laughs> or they probably, wandered in by accident. Probably has a deficiency in uh, intelligence. So it's mm -hmm. like, and that's you where you're wrong. Yeah, you're I know I'm wrong, wrong because I have plenty of friends who are of high intellect who are very, uh, very. I would buy that. Yeah, who, because, who would buy that? Because, because most of what we believe, most of what we accept as fact, we, we do so because we want to believe it, because we need to believe it, and this is human nature. And, and it fits within our framework, our preferred framework. That's well, their it. narrative of how life should be and how people should be and what the... And they're, they're mythos because they're living under a mythology. They're, right. We all are to a certain degree. Yeah, of course, but theirs is theirs is theirs is there. There is a direct threat to me, <laughs> yeah. because they they mean to impose their mythology on me, and I'm against mythologies being. I, I have all the mythologies, beliefs, whatever you want, as long as you're not, and long as as long as it doesn't lead you down a path where you are you are justifying taking some sort of coercive action against me in the name of your mythology. In this case, their mythology is human beings. On one hand, human beings are totally trustworthy, and you should have a pure democracy, one man, one vote, because human beings are smart and we the people. But on the other hand, human beings are fundamentally dangerous, and the only people who should be armed are, are, are government people. Because government people are smart and they'll take care of us and they'll keep the bad guys from getting to us. I mean, there's a there's a mighty contradiction there, but uh, it's yeah. it's not because they're dumb. It's not at all. They're not dumb. They just they they want something from that belief system. Just like you and I will find stuff in our lives that. We, 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 I, I don't necessarily need to critically examine every belief and every thought that I have in my head. If I did, I would go nuts because I have so oh, many I do. I have yeah. so many beliefs and thoughts. There's no way I could get to them all. So, oh, uh, I, I do. I get to all my thoughts and I critically analyze them. I'm, I'm uh, going to call BS how, on that. Say again. I know you. I'm going to call BS on that. Oh no, I'm just superior to you. That's all. No, 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 just definitely, definitely, just the BS bit. is. Rather, rather thick and heavy at this we, present no. moment in time. This, <laughs> I'm gonna call this the BS show. That's the new title. It's no longer the wifey gun. It's the BS show, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the BS show with Professor BS and hey, his victim. I like that. <laughs> and his victim. I, I love like BS. It? Yeah, the you Professor like being BS. Professor BS, man. I am Professor BS. I shall win the day. So we got about eight or so minutes left. Maybe we could get to one more story. I'll, I'll try to get to a story that's uh, kind of kind of brief. It, it's it's just a I don't know. It's just a little shout out thingy here. So okay, okay. So here we go. Ready? Are you ready for the the last story of the evening? Not really. But go ahead. Screw you, man. Screw you, man. 
There it is. A true feminist is a woman with a gun who knows how to use it. That's oh, right. Oh, yeah. A true feminist is a woman with a gun who knows how to use it. And this was reported by the mainstream media. And I just, oh, man, I bet you they killed them to report this story. I don't know why they even decided to, re to report this story because, well, it doesn't fit their narrative there. By the way, you see me scrolling back here. You see Agora, Aggregate of Human Experience. That's my friend Andrew Marich's uh, site. Uh, go to agora.threadless.com and buy his gear. I wear lots of, uh, his, 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 he goes by Bodhi. I wear lots of gear, so I'll give a shout out to agora.threadless.com. And he's on a lot of shows with me. He's actually been on Full Auto as well. So, so this is from wreg.com. I'm going to do my, my, uh, my, my newsy voice. Ready? Are you ready for the newsy voice? Do you want, or dude, you're creeping me out, man. I do not, I, I have some concerns. <laughs> Don't we all? I have some concerns. Don't we all? Meet Lori Shelton. She's learning how to properly use a gun after a nightmare shock. Her f uh, shock. Oh, man, let me start over again. Meet Lori Shelton. She's learning how to properly use a gun after a nightmare shook her family last month. It's a very eerie feeling, but today she's taking a Mississippi gun safety course, learning yay. how to load, yay, shoot, store, and clean a gun. She also practices on a target at the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency in Bartlett. And she said she plans to get her license to carry a permit and get a gun. I wanted to get her in the class and build her confidence back up again to where she does feel safe in her own home, instructor Donna Holloway said. Lori brings her daughter so she can learn as well. I've enjoyed it. I'm glad to know that I have a 15-year-old daughter and she knows the safety and the rules. I feel pretty confident in her. If she ever had to use a weapon for her defense. So this is, this is, you know, obviously this is why I titled this. this is a, you want to be a, you know, a true, fe if you're really a true feminist, then you're pro-gun. And if you're not pro-gun, you're not a feminist. You are not for equal rights. You are not for a, a level playing field. You want to perpetuate the patriarchy. You want to continue to keep women in their subservient role to physically dominant men. You do not want them to have the power and ability to level the physical playing field. You, you bigot. You freaking bigot. So I've decided that all anti-gunners are bigots. They're, they're sexist. They're, 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 I guess well, they're, they're racist they're, they're, as well. They're misogynist. They're well. racist. Oh, and, and they're racist. They're absolutely racist because... A, an inordinate number of minorities live in inner cities where the uh, well, we've done shows about this. If, if we Google Google full auto show racism, I think maybe you'll find it that way. But there you have it, folks. If you want to be a feminist, buy a gun. And if you don't want to buy a gun, not a feminist. Sorry. The, the great equalizer. I've spoken. The great equalizer. The great leveler, man. Yep. And I just. I just, I mean, I don't even know why they chose to run this story because it's not, it's not a story that the MSM would uh, traditionally want to talk about. So we have a few, uh, a few minutes here. So is there anything that we left out on the table that you want to revisit or some minor issue that you wanted to bring up before we, we literally, literally punch this puppy in the head? Well, you, your view of uh, law enforcement and their uh, and their traditional role is is different than mine, and you've commented on yep, that. Yeah, it is. But today I. But that's um, not really what the show's about. But go ahead. Yeah, but today I sat in a courtroom uh, with a police officer and a judge and a and a pro and prosecutor and a defense judge, uh, defense attorney. Not a judge, who um, captured a man who wrote checks in my name, and uh, thought it was very interesting the whole process. Um, 
Oh, ritualistic ceremony? Uh, yeah, there was a ritualistic ceremony, and I liked it. I don't. Yeah. I liked it, and I liked the fact that they caught the SOB who tried to rip me off for close to $1,000. Yeah. Yeah. It's good that uh, that they captured the guy, because, you know, only, when, only so long as the state exists will we be able to capture people that do wrong to others. Yeah. That, that was sarcasm, by the way. Yeah. It's total I, I sarcasm. Sense, I sense that. You sense the sarcasm yeah, there. I do. And, and I... And Who will I build the roads? Who will capture the uh, the uh, check writers, the bad check writers? Well, I I understand um, your impulse to say um, we can live in a world without a state, but the minute two people come together to uh, to figure out where their property lines are going to end and how they're going to manage their different crops you already establish a state no there'll be governance there will be governance governance so isn't anarchy, necessarily anarchy state can't exist anarchy isn't it. lawlessness it's no, no. it's simply non-coercive governance the only time coercion enters into it is when coercion has first been perpetrated by an but actor that's always it's always going to happen when you have groups of people because me and my farmer friends don't like you and your farmer friends when you guys come over onto our property. So we're going to set things up where you're not going to be able to come up on our property anymore. And and those, and the, the other side's going to say you're being coercive. There's you're not being no coercive point. protecting your land. They're, they're going to doubt, they're going to question whose land it is. And then you're going to create a little army of your own. Hey, this is, this is why I'm a powerist. This is why I'm a vis privacian. I believe in power. I believe that power is the only authentic governor between entities and so i mean this is another show you know what you should come on an episode of this previous and we'll talk about this on that show but we, we should this is not the show but that the we're one thing talk about that. the one thing that i think we all agree on is if everyone's armed there's less likelihood of one group saying well you know you have some land and we need to take it because you're not using it properly. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the distribution of power, the more evenly it's distributed, the less likely you will uh, see coercive action being taken. The more unevenly it's distributed, the more likely that you will have. Well, and the and history is ripe with examples. Yep, absolutely. So on that note, we are just about out of time. I want to give a shout out to... The page that we're broadcasting on, we are on the Liberty Principle page. No consent from the governed. So you want to, Dimitri? Have you have you liked that page yet? You yeah, should, because I, I curate the news on there from like uh, one to four p.m. No, I so. like I like pages that have like puppy dogs who play with kittens. That makes sense. Uh, everything I, that I, I know about pages. you. That my favorite is the one that keeps popping up in my meme. Which is on Facebook. Which pop is the up in your meme. Or pop up Something in my... pops up in your meme. Did you, you know add... what I meant. Oh my it gosh. Did you just in... discover the internet today? I did actually. I don't doubt it with that kind well, of there is a meme. There is a meme that keeps popping up. Uh, and, and it's the one with the cobra and the two puppies. Where oh. The cobra saves the puppies from falling and drowning into the pool down at the bottom of the well. Oh, yeah, he saved them to eat them. No, no, you got to watch the whole story. No, I've heard this story. I think it's fake news. It's not. I've already the deduced Indians, it's fake news. The Indians dude, never produce fake news. The Indians would news. never produce fake it's news. Never, ever and produce I enjoy, fake news. And I enjoy those memes and those Those articles. are th Those are quality stuff. That's, that's, yeah. uh, that's, that's quality stuff. So next week, I, I don't know. Next week, maybe we'll have Michael on. We haven't had him on in a while. What do you think? Yeah. It'd Get be Michael good. On. He's got. I, I want to pick his brain about what's going on in the Middle East. Yeah. So, so we might we might talk a little bit about uh, uh, what's going on in the world. We haven't done that in a while. So, well, well, you know, it's it's good to have a a, a sense of what's going on in the world from a purely from a self defense, self reliance. Where am I at in my life if this happens? Kind of perspective. So, that's that's probably what we're going to end up talking about. Uh, uh, 
next week. I want to thank everybody for joining us here on Full Auto with... Uh, I'm going to have to change my thing from uh, Dimitri to uh, Professor Rambo. Prop. Do it. Do do whatever you have to do to get it right. <laughs> okay. Objectively. Objectively yeah. so. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> we will see you next week. I can't say same bat time, same bat channel, because anybody that follows the shows that I do, I do not stick to a regular schedule. I do shows. The only show that you're going to... Unless I get sick or something happens, but full auto is every week. Other than that, all the other shows, it's whenever it is. And if you want to know all the stuff that I do, which I actually I have to fix it because for some reason full auto is not on there right now. Well, you can actually see the show. Well, you just won't stop talking. But I don't have the links. Yes, I know. Well. Go to istv.me. That is istv.me. And that's where you can find all the stuff, not only that I do, but that I do with other people as well. So thank you. We'll see you. We'll see you next week. See you. We have any Kali last. Nikta. Kali Nikta. That's it. Just Kali Nikta. That's it. All righty. And we're done.